could just take this um, advice, observe people. Don't get lost in uh, trying to impress or steer the ship all the time or trying to uh, provide face time. Observe your people because if you can observe their body language and how they're interacting, you're going to learn a lot more from them than you would in just a regular conversation. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax, and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. This episode is powered by Jay Ventures, a community-driven VC fund in Silicon Valley in partnership with Leomitech, sponsored by Homeward Ventures, Hippo Insurance, Opus Labs, Synergy Global, Hillel at Stanford, Leap, Birthright Excel, Serona Partners, and in media partnership with C-Tech. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders, meet Latanya Wilkins. Founder of Change Coaches and author of Leading Below the Surface, Latanya partners with executives, up- upwardly mobile professionals, and teams to build cultures of belonging through highly customized coaching and learning experiences. She is a sought after keynote speaker and has inspired audiences around the world. She built her career working in HR, talent management, and learning and development at Fortune 500 companies before teaching and taking on progressive leadership roles at the University of Illinois' Gies College of Business. Latonia's book, Leading Below the Surface, How to Build Real and Psychologically Safe Relationships with People Who Are Different From You, was an Amazon best-selling new release in multiple categories. All of her work is based on below-the-surface leadership principles. Well, Latonia, this show is all about leadership and all about different experiences of leadership and different principles and perspectives and stories. And I'm really, really excited to have you here as an author, as a coach, as an executive. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to hear about your personal journey and, and the way that you're perceiving leadership in, in all its shapes and forms. So thank you very much for being here. Absolutely. I'm happy to be here. I love talking about all things leadership. Amazing. Well, you know, take me back a little bit into, into what you're, you know, the way you're experiencing leadership today. If you had to think through leadership and, and, and distill it down to a few key characteristics that are specifically profound to you, what would those be? Yeah, so mine is all about uh, what I call leading below the surface. And it's about, uh, you know, building real connections with people who are different from you. So what does that include? Well, it includes uh, being a good listener, uh, being empathetic, um, being able to observe people. Um, it means what I call real leadership, which is an archetype, um, being relatable, equitable, aware, and loyal. Um, it's also around uh, building psychologically safe relationships with people. Um, when I went back and I thought about all the best leaders that I've ever had, those were really the qualities that they had. It wasn't, oh, they were innovative or strategic. It was those things. And sometimes we kind of get lost in like those magic words of, oh, they have to be innovative or strategic or all these, these fun words, but it really comes down to how you treat people. And, and when you're looking at the way, the way leaders treat people and what distills it then somebody to being a good leader, how, how, where, where in your career and your life have you observed this quality of kindness, empathy, listening to be a, a, pr- a really important part of being a good leader? Yeah, so I was uh, working at a consulting firm at one point in my career, and uh, what happened is I was able to uh, win us a big client, a, a big client extension. And so uh, they, this consulting firm decided to have a big party to celebrate uh, that, I, that we had won this deal. And uh, the party just wasn't my thing. It wasn't the way that the party was set up. Um, the, the people at the party, um, you know, I probably would have rather done something else, like, um, you know, a little bit more intimate. Uh, and so I went to that party, uh, even though, because I, I wanted to feel grateful and I wanted to show the company I was grateful. And one of the leaders who actually threw the party uh, came up to me afterwards uh, during our one-on-one and he said, hey, you didn't look like you had a lot of fun at that. And I was like, uh, you know, it was okay, you know. And he was like, no, it wasn't okay. You did not have fun. You did not look happy. You know, what was going on? And we were able to have a conversation. And it was like the first time in my career that that had ever happened. I wasn't being punished 
it was a very psychologically safe conversation. Huh. Um, and we were able to talk about, you know, how to celebrate uh, me in the future. And if leaders could just, one of the things he did, and if leaders could just take this um, advice, observe people. Don't get lost in uh, trying to impress or steer the ship all the time or trying to uh, provide face time. Observe your people because if you can observe their body language and how they're interacting, you're going to learn a lot more from them than you would in just a regular conversation. Incredible. And how do we do that at scale, do you think? So if we're running organizations, at the end, the way you are experiencing as leaders sometimes is we're talking to a crowd. Sometimes we're talking and we're not there to see the immediate reaction, yet we still want to embody those same principles of observability, kindness, and empathy that you're talking about. So what, what do we do at those moments? Yeah, you know, I think when you're talking to a, a crowd, it's, uh, you know, I do a lot of keynote speaking. And so it's, whenever I keynote, I always think, this is not about me talking to people. It's about me, uh, this is for the audience. It's about me connecting with the audience. Mm -hmm. And that's the number one thing that I do. And um, with that, you, at scale, you, you listen to the, like, as you're talking, you look around, you see how people are receiving things, you call people in, um, and you see, and you're constantly adjusting to this. You know, the thing is, Michael, is like, it doesn't have to be hard for, for traditional leaders that are in leading organizations, because, you know, you could do this type of stuff in one-on-ones, you could do this type of stuff in team meetings. Um, one of the ways you could do it in team meetings is, Instead of, again, trying to steer the ship with an agenda, you take a step back and observe how your team is interacting. And you can learn a ton about them by doing that. Incredible. Hey, Latanya, walk me through a little bit about your own journey. I'm, I'm really curious to hear how one gets to be occupied with this question of leadership and coaching uh, as such a meaningful part of your life. Well, what, what, what led you there? Yeah, so I actually, it's funny because my career started as a traditional corporate career. I led uh, global leadership development teams and talent teams. Um, and uh, I just wasn't, uh, I, I realized it wasn't my calling. Was I content? Yeah, but there was more calling me. And what was calling me is something that I learned from my grandma, and that was um, the importance of building relationships with people who are different from you, building real relationships with people who are different from you. And this kept, um, this calling kept getting louder and louder as time went by. Uh, 2020, it started, get, it, it got a little increasingly louder, and then it just kept increasingly going up. And um, that's when I uh, kind of left corporate. I, I went to, to work for a business school um, and uh, lead culture and leadership there. And uh, from there, um, I was able to also kind of be in stealth mode a little bit and figure out, hey, what do I want to do with all this? Uh, you know, I, I, what do I want to do with this calling? And so that's when I um, did some coach training. My mentor was urging it. She's like, hey, do, do some coach training. I was like, I don't know. I'm already a coach. She's like, no, you really have to do this. So I did it and I loved it. And um, that's when I was like, hey, my mission is to change the way we lead. And Incredible. the way we lead, we have to think about, you know, how we treat people, especially people who are different from us. And that's the, that's the missing secret sauce here that we're not talking about when we talk about diversity and inclusion. It's really about, you know, creating belonging for, for everyone. And so um, that's, that's, it's been my calling. As you can see, it's a, it's a passion of mine. It really started with my grandmother kind of modeling that behavior. And I knew that the world needed this. I love it. Tell me a little bit about learning how to coach, uh, you know, from, from, the, from your experience. You know, you're talking about how helping people become better leaders. What do you have to go through as a leader yourself to, to be able to coach people to do that? Yeah, so that's a really good question. <laughs> uh, it's funny because there's a lot of people out there that call themselves coaches and they they, and I, when I experienced them, I'm like, wow, this is, this is more like advising. Um, you know, to be a coach, uh, the first thing, um, you have to be comfortable with silence um, in reflection. And that takes huh. a long, that took me a long time. Where do you um, meet silence and reflection as a coach? Um, so when I'm coaching, especially when I'm coaching teams, people need, they, they need room to reflect. Um, most of the change happens outside of the coaching sessions. 
So when I'm asking people a question, for example, a powerful question for them to reflect on, um, you know, how they might have handled a situation or how they want to handle a situation, um, I think the uh, American thing sometimes is you got to answer fast. you got to answer what's in your head. But no, <laughs> that actually is not a way to reflect. So you have to be comfortable with different ways people interact. And a lot of people might need, you know, some time to chew on that, or they might need to come back to it later in the session, or they might even need to come back to it down the road, um, you know, after a week or so after they've had time to think about it. Um, silence is so important. I'm glad we're talking about this. It's so important. Silence is so important because um, a lot of us, again, we're, we're really uncomfortable with it. But that's, again, that's where a lot of that magic happens. That's where a lot of the ahas occur is when you, as a coach, can see that silence and you can call it out and you can call it out in a way that's psychologically safe and non-judgmental, and be able to use that as a medium to connect better with the client. Incredible. Incredible. Okay. So silent, being okay with silence, observability, what, what are other things that you've learned as, yeah. a, as a coach? The second thing, and I, I, I actually set this out in my newsletter yesterday, um, you have to be willing to throw out your agenda. <laughs> And a lot of people are afraid to do that. And why I get it, um, we are afraid to do that because I, I think when we feel like we have control of a session or control of the agenda, we feel more in control and that gives us a sense of confidence. But what if I told you that it, the best coaching sessions are the ones where there's no agenda, um, the client comes up with the agenda, and that when your agenda goes out the window? Because, uh, and a story I have is um, some clients that one client I was recently coaching, and this happens quite a bit, um, we had an agenda all set up. Uh, she wanted some coaching because she was getting ready to meet with her board and it was a CEO. And um, I could tell something was off. And I could tell there was some, something traumatic going on that was taking over the session. And so we threw out the agenda. We didn't talk about the board. Um, we, we explored what was really going on. And what was really going on is just an overall sense of confidence about the whole thing that we were talking about, um, about the whole um, thing that she wanted to present to the board. And so it's, uh, you have to be okay with that. Um, as coaches, we call that dancing in the moment. And in the moment, it's, it's wherever that, that coaching session takes you. Wow. Okay. So that, and that goes back to that observability piece and leadership that you were talking about before mm -hmm. and that ties in the empathy and kindness and understanding who you're talking to mm -hmm. and how they may be perceiving what you're doing, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you, go ahead. Yeah, and the third thing, the last thing I will say, um, and even though there's more, this is not an exhaustive list by any means, is you got to be okay saying, you know, that's outside of my expertise. <laughs> um, a lot of times, um, we bring people in, or we, we as coaches, we, we want to be right, we want to be the savior, um, but you will actually gain more respect if you say, if, if there's something going on and you're not the best person to talk about that with. Um, you know, I, I had a client um, that um, I was coaching and they needed additional resources. Um, they, they needed additional resources on financial, finances and funding and things like that. And so, um, I was able to say, hey, I'm, this, is, this is where our relationship starts and stops. Um, do you agree with that? Um, okay, so let's figure out how you get the extra help that you need. Okay, I got it. So if we're, if we're looking now at leadership as more generally, and we're looking at individuals as, as any, you know, every individual is a leader in their own domain, what are the main challenges that you see leaders facing in their day-to-day? -day? Where, where, what are some patterns that are constantly coming again and again, mm -hmm. and, you know, the average individual that is trying to be a leader in their own life? Yeah, you know, I, I love that question, Michael, because I think it's, it's that the, the future of leadership and the future of work, it's um, what we're, we're all kind of grappling with right now. Like, every right. month seems to pose something different. Um, you know, the pandemic and the ups and downs of the pandemics and the, and the, and, you know, the unevenness of the pandemic, where in some areas it was worse than others, um, hybrid work, remote work, um, you know, diversity and inclusion. How do we actually do this for real? How do we actually change our culture um, and the DNA of our culture uh, for diversity and inclusion? 
And now also wars, right? Now we have any day of the week, a war could be started. Um, and our employees uh, will be, uh, you know, traumatized by that. And so as leaders, we, we have to adjust to a lot. And so there's no checklist anymore. It's, it's again, it's all about the core of, of how we work as a leader in order to be able to address a lot of these issues. Incredible. Latanya, I really want to thank you. I know how incredibly busy you are and you have to uh, now, now work on, do, do, uh, give a workshop this morning, but I do appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to join me here and share a little bit about your perspective on leadership. And, uh, and I definitely am going to continue thinking about what you were t- talking about, the empathy, observability, our ability to not always be at the forefront and sharing this is how good we are, but being able to reflect and, and, and say, okay, how can we be how can we give to the others? And, and, and I, I loved how you mentioned that this, the leaders that sustained in your memory until today and that made the biggest impact are not the ones that were the smartest, the most intelligent, the most successful ones. They were the ones that listened to you. They were the ones that, yeah. that made you feel important, made you feel heard. And I, so I appreciate that. And thank you very, very much. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. This was fun.